Good morning, everybody. My name is Niall Riley. I'm one of the account managers here in Amazon Web Services. This morning, uh, I'm going to be taking you through the third webinar in a series of three that we've held over the, this month, which will actually cover about building the case of the cloud and in how to engage your business stakeholders around it. The, what, I, what I want you to get out of this is, is we're going to talk through a number of things. So we're going to talk through businesses who have um, been down this path before uh, and how they've done it and how they've gone about it. Um, so, so let's start off. So in terms of uh, myself, I've actually been in AWS now for about 18 months uh, and thoroughly enjoying working with a vast array of uh, various different sizes of businesses and helping them move to the cloud. So in terms of the storyline that I want to take you through today is, is going to be pretty much in two sections. The first section I want to talk you through the trends that we're seeing um, externally out, out in, in the business world today of why businesses are moving to the cloud. And then I'll talk you through, which will be probably about 60% of the rest of the slides, around building your business case about how you, how you can engage the right stakeholders in your organization and take them on that journey that you want to take. All right, so let's get started. Trends. So you may have, um, you may have heard why are companies shifting to the cloud. And, and here are a number of examples of, of why customers are beginning to move. So they're moving from capital expense to variable expense. You know, they really are lowering their costs, and we'll talk through some examples later on. And it helps them stop getting, guessing capacity. So there's no need to over-provision in the long term anymore. Um, you increase your agility platform for innovation. We're a huge fan of innovation here, and that's one of the key drivers of how and why we want to help businesses move to the cloud. And one of AWS's um, common uh, mechanisms is we want to actually take the undifferentiated heavy lifting away from the businesses and allow them to focus on what they're very strong at, and that's looking after their own customers. So in terms of, um, we've, AWS has been around for quite a period of time, over 12 years. So when we started off, we actually seen a number of startups move on to AWS. So there's a number of logos here in the slide, and I'm sure you recognize quite a few. Some are local here in Australia, and some are actually global. And the reason why startups moved over to AWS is because it was a very affordable way to help build their business. It's very economical to turn around and spin up servers, spin up databases, and utilize them as and when they needed. <coughs> Excuse me. So startups really were uh, building on AWS from the beginning. And that has helped the likes of Airbnb grow globally very, very quickly. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have a lot of enterprises on AWS. And again, I've included some local logos and some uh, lo global logos that you'll recognize. So a lot of organizations organizations here that we've worked very closely with here, even like the CBA. So calling out CBA, for example, they turned around and they were migrating their storage to AWS. And the benefit of that was they're actually able to increase capacity as when they needed, and also from a cost perspective as well. It was going to cost them tens of millions of dollars in savings by moving that to AWS. Okay, so we've touched on some of the various different sizes of customers that have moved over to AWS, but let's just pause for a second and go back into AWS ourselves, and a lot of customers uh, ask us, um, what is it about AWS that helps drive our innovation and helping customers uh, on their own journey in innovation? And we all always talk about certain mechanisms we use and how we're able to maintain it. And really, these are called our leadership principles. And these are very important to us. We're not just saying it. We actually hear it a lot in the office. I would actually talk to them daily about various different leadership principles to my colleagues and to my customers. And without these mechanisms, these principles would only be good intentions. So what it really boils down to is our company's mission to be the Earth's most customer-centric company. And one of the leadership principles that I want to talk to you about is customer obsession. 
So what is customer obsession? Like we actually really believe that taking a long-term view will, and always doing the right thing by the customer, that in the long run we will be successful. And in many ways, we have been working with technology over the years, and you've probably not heard similar things, but this is something that we abide by. It's actually something that we quite um, qu quite often hear from our customers that it's not anything that you would hear from other uh, other vendors in the market like that. So continuing on on, on, the, on the trends, really t technology and innovation is providing new tools and capabilities and they'll help you innovate and, and better serve your, your customers over a period of time. So when you see this quote here from the Econ World Economics Forum that more than 50% of the Fortune 500 listed companies in the year 2000 are gone, like it really shows how innovation is taking a foothold in that market. In less than 15 years, it's always declining over, over, over that period of time. And these are companies that are powered by the cloud and those type of technologies. And this is why it's, it's helping, I suppose, to really disrupt um, the ecosystem um, that was the large, large customers. And really that boils to the, the disrupt really demands a response and it, what I mean by response here is it's driving new innovation now that means a lot of things to various different companies and what I'll, I'll touch on a couple at the moment to say that we speak a lot to customers today that are doing a lot in in big data analytics and so that enables you to understand your customers and serve them in a more meaningful way and new technology platforms helps you bring products and services to market faster than ever before. So rather than taking um, potentially months to, to purchase and spin up new servers, it can be done now within hours. But it's really hard to drive real change when so much of the budget internally is just there to help support status quo. Like, do you know that up to 80% of IT budgets are there and spent on uh, maintaining existing workloads? So organizations that have built up these applications or products over a longer period of time need to be able to keep these standing. So they're not, it's, it's, that's holding back the innovation within that company because they're spending so much on the maintenance. You know, organizations now are built upon complex digital workloads. Like when you see certain applications that are very uh, old, is probably the best way of saying it, is that there's no new innovation coming out of these applications, then it, 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 helps, to, it helps to wonder how new and innovative startups can build up and build, on, build that scale. And we ne really need to address these issues uh, when we're engaging with the business and, and building out where you want to go as a business in, into the cloud and in the short and medium term. So really that boils down to and it's uh, how can you respond to the distribution and that's required in a new model. So when we talk to customers, we want to be able to help them to focus on what's differentiating their business. We want to help to retire the technical debt that's they've built up over that period of time. We'll all, always talk to them about how they can innovate like a startup at speed. I talk to my customers that, okay, what does a proof of concept look like to help you on your journey? And what I mean by that proof of concept is what can we do in a four to six week period to help you drive innovation within your business? What could that one tipping point be? So these are a number of things that um, within the new model helps businesses uh, grow. Uh, and even reducing the risk that I suppose the undifferentiated heavy lifting that we take on helps your business again focus on, on what's core to them. So that's so we've covered trends, and now what I want to be able to spend quite a bit more time on is is helping you um, get up to speed on how you can build a business case. Now, I understand that many of you on the webinar today might be in various different sizes of business. Some of you may be business owners. So I really want to, I suppose, give an understanding of of this can. Um, be for various different sizes of business and you'll 
find a common theme throughout the rest of the slides that I'm going to talk to you about. So where to start? So where to start when you're building out your business case is very important. So you really want to be able to, um, to establish an effective business case to move to AWS. You really need to understand your applications or your products and know how your organization does them today. So you really want to be very clear and you want to have the right people there to tell you about the applications, about the products, because you want to understand what the existing workloads are today. And then by understanding the existing workloads and applications that you're running today, whether it's in an on-prem or colo environment, you'll be able then to sit down and work out from the, from, and building up a business case to move to the cloud. And what I mentioned a couple of minutes ago is a common theme is probably what you're beginning to um, evolve around the business is bringing the various different people along with you on this journey. So where to start? Now, I've captured quite a number of different departments within organizations. And it comes back to what I just said a moment ago. Some of you may have uh, different people within the business under these different um, umbrellas of groups of people that have gathered people uh, with. But really it comes down to uh, having people uh, engaged along this journey. And this is a very, very important point. It's very important that you bring people along the journey with you and keep them engaged. So let's start off with making sure that uh, from the business side that you're, you have a, an exec sponsor senior leader that is engaged with you and coming along with you on this journey. You know, you want to make sure and you have uh, the right people involved from the start and this is very important. So when we talk about uh, the various different applications and the product owners, you need to be able to bring them in and be able to, for them to share uh, what is running the application today, what are the their pain points, where they want to take the application, and bringing them along the journey will help um, will help build the business case as well, because it doesn't boil down to numbers at all, it boils down to a lot more than that. You want to talk to uh, your legal and risk team, you want to make sure that they are comfortable uh, on the journey that you're taking them. We'll definitely talk to them around the compliance and the data privacy that we put in place and the mechanisms that we help organizations put in a strong uh, security presence in place. And we'll talk to them about that in a lot of detail. Your architecture team will want them involved as well so they have an input into how does a new architecture could look like or even understanding what the current architecture looks like today. Developers as well, like what are the de devs saying? What do they want to uh, build in the future uh, within that application? Like, is there a certain um, language that they want to start thinking about? Is there a certain product or a new service that they want to start implementing in within the applications that they'll be able to build up? So it's important that you're able to capture um, their feedback and thoughts about being able to really get a very strong indication of your current infrastructure and then being able to define what your potential future infrastructure begin to look like. The other uh, key people in this is, is your internal marketing and HR team. Now you might ask why and it really boils down to how can you make sure that the rest of the business knows the journey that you're going on and how can you make sure that your HR team are going to be aware of the training and upskilling that the various different people within the business will need. And that will not just be from a technical perspective, but really from a business perspective. Like we really want to be able to talk to finance as well because their concern might be around unlimited elasticity and expandability which could mean build shock and which could totally freak them out. So you need to be able to take them along the journey with you. So within AWS, you have a very granular control over who uses what within the console. You have a very clear visibility and allocation and reporting back from the costs. So there should be no surprises. 
And if these controls aren't enough, we also have other mechanisms within the portal, such as a trusted advisor, which makes recommendations to help reduce your costs. Our solution architectural team and the account management team will actually focus on driving cost optimization and cost reduction, because it goes back to us being customer obsessed and thinking long term. I mentioned as well that we always like to do proof of concepts. So we can actually prove that this application that you're looking to run or this product that you're looking to run on AWS can. And we're not saying we can just move stuff into AWS and not have to worry about the cost. Someone is going to, in your business is going to need, need to take responsibility for managing the cost. And we can do that as well internally here by helping upskill you as a business and by bringing in certain partners if needed to help do that for you. But when it comes to managing it correctly, as a business you need to be able to be responsible for that. Like when you talk to your procurement teams, you will be able to spend, that's probably spent a lot of time previously on negotiations and everything. You know, like I've been in sales for quite a long time and I can say that there's, you know, negotiations is not really an enjoyable part of, of a sales role. But the great news is with AWS, these are not needed anymore because we're committed to always delivering the best price. Our price is very transparent that we have on the website that we actually share with all companies globally of what the price is to use any of our services. But it comes back to being a customer obsessed, we're always looking to drive down costs. Now that actually, what that, let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Over the last 12 years, we've reduced our, our prices over 62 times. And this has really got to do the economies of scale that we have by uh, the number of customers moving over to AWS. And really, in terms of the, if there's any volume discounts, we can certainly talk to them um, to, uh, as well with certain customers, although there is certain minimum commitments too. From a security perspective as well, it's a very important concept that we take your uh, security team and your architecture team through a security, uh, shared security model. That's very important because security is job zero for us. You know, when customers might ask us, where's our data centers? We actually don't know. We actually don't know where in Australia our data, data centers are and why, because it's not important. Like we, we can actually turn around and make sure we have the right compliance in place, such as SOC, PCI, DSS, HIPAA compliance. We have the right controls in place and the mechanisms to allow you to enable that on your side because of the shared responsibility model. Now, before I go to the rest of the slides, it's, it's to, to me, this is one of the most important slides in the deck, the people that you bring along your journey. So I cannot stress enough how it is important for you to take the rest of the team along. Okay, so let's start off next with about understanding, our, okay, how can, we, how can we do this? So we have the right people around the table, what do we need to do next? And it's really understanding this, your existing environment, your existing infrastructure. And we'll do that by having an application discovery and we'll do that by, um, by using a certain number of tools to help understand really what you have. And that will help us inform what can and should be migrated across to AWS. So in terms of the application discovery, now, depending on what environments you have today, you may not know or uh, uh, the utilization of your environment. You could have five, ten, a thousand servers running your, in your environment today and what you really want to be able to understand is what the utilization of your environment is. You will be able to want to understand what is interacted with each other. You may believe that you have 500 servers but if by running certain tools such as RISC that can happen to understand and go through the network and understand really how many um, 
virtual machines or servers you have in your environment. You'll actually look to take um, you know, your inventory from your CMDB and bring that into it as well. You may have inputs from your, your vCenter. You may have in-flight projects that you may be having as well of what potential future um, projects you may need extra servers or, or databases for. And this will all be brought in as part of the portfolio assessment. And this is critical because you're actually spending quite a bit of time here in understanding what your portfolio is. You'll be sitting down and have an application uh, assessment workshops with the application owners and with the architects and with the developers to really get a strong understanding of what your application is and how that could look in AWS. You want to sit down as well with the operations team and understand how they work today. So it really helps bring in more and more people from around the business in. And as part of that portfolio assessment, you really want to be starting to think out about, okay, if, we, if we're looking at moving to AWS, how can we make sure we're set up from a best practice perspective from day one? And that's really about a couple of things here. It's about building your landing zone. And what I mean by landing zone is you're setting up your account from a best practice perspective. You're having uh, the right security uh, in place. You're having the right access access for people uh, for the various different applications. And it's about building up uh, a cloud center of excellence. Now, what is a cloud center of excellence? It's about bringing the team that and the people along that journey. And what I mentioned is that we provide training from a technical perspective, such as technical essentials. And that's really helping customers to understand, okay, how can I go into the console and spin up various different services? and how, how can I shut them down, setting up VPCs as well. And these are training courses that we help provide customers as part of that journey. Additional training can also be provided in helping getting you certified, which is a really good of having certified, whether it's solution architects, involved within your business as part of your, you know, your cloud center of excellence. It might be really important as well to have of someone from a business essentials uh, team involved. So business essentials is actually one of the courses that we help share back to the business of what is AWS and what the benefits are. So you may want to take your finance team through or your commercial managers, your product managers through that training as well because they're all coming along the journey here as well. So it's really, really important. So. Now, once I have done the portfolio assessment, we will next move on to be able to understand, okay, we understand future state, great. Now, sorry, excuse me, we understand current state. Now, let's understand what future state could be. And we do that through a mechanism that we have is called the six or pattern. And we do that with all our organizations globally as well. So the six R's, Retain, retire, re-host, repurchase, re-platform, and refactor. And I'll go through these in a moment, but really this helps boil down to what can be moved into the cloud and what cannot as well. And it all comes back to sitting and working with your application owners and your developers and under really understanding what those apps are and what it could be in AWS. So let's talk about retain. So retain really means it's not moving. So the client, the client and the customer will just keep and host that application in their own source environment. You know, um, you know, it, it might be a, a non x86 or a, a, some type of Unix uh, application, but it means that will not move to AWS. Retire. It just this means actually that the application and host will decommission. So there's no migration to uh, target involved. Um, and it'll actually be retired at a certain stage. Rehost, like many of the applications migration to move to, to the cloud, rehost means it's a like for like scenario. So there's normally minimal effort involved to make the application work on the cloud and that the, there be minimal impact into the infrastructure that it has. So uh, uh, like it's a, a simple V uh, V to V migration. Repurchase means that the application will be replaced. 
and potentially to new cloud native application or to a SaaS platform. So an example of that might be a CRM to Salesforce or from a storage it might be local to cloud. Replatform. Replatform means that you're uh, you know, up in the version of the OS that you have or the database onto your target cloud. From a storage perspective, the migrations may not change. So it's really about getting a really strong application. Excuse me. It's, it's really about having an application that can be replatformed so it's more cloud friendly. And the replatform and rearchitect is pretty much means where you have your OS and your data and your database is porting across. Your really your middleware and application would change to a cloud service offering. So you your database might transition to MySQL to Aurora um, as well. So this is what the in terms of will help build your business case and understanding of the various different applications, which of these uh, segments does your application move across into. And then by building that out with you, we really have to understand what can and should be migrated. So what apps are going to retire? Using this example here of, with a, a, someone who, a customer who's running 467 servers, 10% of their applications are going to retire and they're going to be decommissioned. 74% of them are actually going to be rehosted, replatformed, or re architect. Cloud native projects would be for new applications, sorry, for new projects that you're beginning to work on. And also, in terms of retained, it might be applications that's not a focus or priority for you now that's moving across to AWS. And this is uh, as part of building your, your case to move into the cloud, this will really be built up by a lot of the team from operations, your developers, your architectural, your architects as well, along with whether it's a partner that you're, you're working with or it's whether it's your with partner and AWS that you're working with as well. So we really want to be, um, have dived deep into your environment that you have and being able to then understand what that future application and your future environment could be with AWS. Okay, so, We've gone on the journey and we've taken you through, we have the right people around the table. We've held a, a number of assessments and a number of interviews throughout the, the teams that are involved from the architects, operations and the, the uh, developers. And we have done the portfolio assessments and we know what can move and what can't. So now I'll tell you next what we're going to be moving to. We're going to be moving to how to build the business case. So how are we going to build the business case? Once we have that data, then we will be in a lot of a stronger position to help build this up from a commercial perspective. Now, Amazon is a very data-driven company. So once we have the data from, the, from of your analysis of the utilization of your servers, of the detailed analysis from the interviews of what current and future will be, we can then help be really articulate and strong in building out the business case. So normally when we, when we look at business cases, we will look at really two scenarios. So the two scenarios would be is, okay, do nothing versus all in. And there's that part in the middle that I'll talk to you about, which is, you know, a hybrid cloud. So you're progressively moving across. So what that shows is, is actually it's going to take you a period of time to move across uh, your, your, your applications. You, it would be very unrealistic to go, okay, well, everything's going to move across by X date. So there's going to be a, a, a time to be able to move, migrate that across. And what we normally see with the larger end of a town is that can take up to 18 months. So we want to be able to build this business case, um, which is very much data-driven and realistic. So in terms of what comparing the cost of what it would be, and we'll go through this in, 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 from a, with those 
three different scenarios perspective. So when we look at uh, scenario one, you're actually turning around and saying that it's going to cost you over five years, it's going to cost you 19 million to run those applications uh, uh, if you do not move to the cloud. Now in terms of the costs, it's, it's, it's it's manpower as well, it's the data center cost, it's all your costs that you're in court on your budget when if you want to run the exact same environment for the next five years, uh, whether it's on-prem or in colo. Now as part of your hybrid environment, what we see is here is there's a 15% reduction in your costs in moving to AWS and that's really driven off the back of because you're actually managing two environments at the same time. So you're going to be managing your on-prem and you're going to be managing your new costs and migrations over to AWS. And it's important as well to, to acknowledge that and, and then to be, okay, well, in, in 24 months' time and if we've moved across to AWS, what would our costs look like then? And then that's when you really see a, a, a real a lot stronger benefit from a business case perspective in, in moving to AWS. So you can actually see that the cost would reduce then to 52%. So it's, it's, there, there is, there's a strong commercial, uh, I suppose, result and it's been seen when you move to AWS. But that's when you really look at the hard numbers. And now, what about the soft benefits of moving to, to the cloud? That's something that what we define as soft benefits, as in what is uh, what can we not put a cost against? So, what what would they look like? So you have your um, you know the soft benefits that could be tangible benefits, such as the uptime that you would have by moving to AWS. Like when you when you look at the you know the uplift that you would have. Like I'll give you a couple of examples here. Like so, like when GE moved across to AWS, they've seen a ninety nine percent reduction in their Sev one outages. So that needs to be taken into account as well. When Visi moved to AWS as well, it moved that it was taking less than um, one to two weeks to spin up a new instance. just hours when they migrated to AWS. Tangible benefits is something that can be, you know, that can be measured and reported, but these need to be taken into account when you move to AWS. Like when you turn around and you talk to the developers within your business and they're now they're beginning to use a, a lot of new services, like I know reInvent is on this week, which is our, uh, our annual conference where we launch a lot, a lot of new products, which they can have access to pretty much straight away. So from a developer's perspective, we often find that businesses that move to AWS, the developers love that they're able to use a lot more different services and they're able to do a lot more. So you're really getting into, our, from a HR perspective, a lot more from a retention perspective. You'll also be able to look at, what about if I wanted to move to a new market? Can I spin up a, a, my environment that I'm running in the Sydney region in Ireland, for example? Yes, you can. And rather than uh, looking at spinning up new environments in a data center, you can do that then within weeks by having been on AWS. You now, you can improve your time to market with new innovation. Like when I spoke about proof of concepts, we challenge businesses to, to build out a proof of concept with us within four to six weeks. And that how really, that has a massive impact as well on, on driving an innovative culture then within the business. And it really helps then transform the people within the business. It helps them build out a new, a new way of working, a new, they can see a, a new innovation coming through within your organization. So it, it really helps then, to, to, it really helps boil down to these, in, you know, the intangible benefits of moving to AWS. Now, the next thing we'll move on to is, 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 is coming towards the, the last part of building out your business case and how can I prepare to migrate safely and fast across to AWS and really how can I get started? So, in terms of, be, we've 
now I've built up the business case and now we're beginning to understand in parallel how can I make sure that migration uh, we're ready for it and we're planning accordingly so you know it's, it's an, and it's very important to cover these off because it's it's really boils down to a, a number of key areas that we we look to talk to from an operational readiness perspective now I mentioned earlier the landing zone like really distant this deliverable helps design and deploy an environment in AWS, which is, really includes the account structure, the network design, the VPCs, the VPNs, the direct connected for its multi region. And this really helps, is it, it's a, uh, you can build up a Word document then to really help build up and share with the rest of the organization what your account structure looks like. I spoke earlier as well about a cloud center of excellence. So the cloud center of excellence really is a, an establishes a, a core team that will act as the driving change and focuses on training and building the experience within your organization. So when you have a cloud center of excellence, it would be from different people with, in different business areas. So it they could be from the developers, it could be architects, operations, finance, HR, marketing, as I mentioned. And that really helps uh, educate, and there can be that go-to person to uh, go to with uh, if the other developers have questions on AWS they can help bring that and they can be your core uh, AWS advocates within the business. The cloud operations model as well determines the structure and the planning of the operations practice for customers to maximize the business benefits of moving to AWS. So it's really important that your operations team is, is, is on the journey here. The security and compliance work stream really assesses and closes the gap and implements the really tight security and compliance practices on AWS. We've got monitoring tools and systems in place that are really industry standard, standard and best practice. So we'll often have a sol our solution architects go out and talk to our customers and run a best practice uh, review across their environment that they have and identify if there are um, any areas that they can help improve on to, to be able to build that up from a best practice perspective. So we've done that all in line with the portfolio migration planning that we've done. So we're now building up the, we've got the landing zone in place, your core center of excellence team is, is coming together. Your operations team is, is beginning to real, understand and realize uh, how to be able to run their environment in their in, in AWS and they're going to be running that very efficiently. The security team will be across uh, and understand how AWS works and how their new security is probably going to be uplifted. And we have the migration uh, planning session. So really the, the, the detailed um, migration planning session is to understand okay what applications are going to be moved and when. So how do you do this? You'll actually be able to build up with the core people within your team, your product, your application owners, your architects, your operations, and your developers. What are you looking to move to AWS and by when? When does it make sense to move this application to AWS? And you would sit down as a team and work that out. And how you how it's really important as part of the you know as part of a detailed migration planning session is to be able to understand and not uh, overestimate the work that you're going to have in currently just keeping up the day-to-day -day business that you have at the moment running an on-prem or a colo, and then as well by moving over to AWS. So it's it's important to set realistic expectations here. And in terms of how can we make sure that um, you know going back to what I mentioned is how do I how do I get started, and really how we get started here, it goes back to the core theme that I wanted to 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 share with you was your internal champions is going to be again from around the ver the various different business units. These champions as well is going to be for your you're going to have a senior leadership. Uh, having a champion there who's going to be your exec sponsor and you're going to have people from the various different business units that I mentioned involved as part of this journey because it's very important that people are brought on 
as part of the journey because you want to be a success as part of the migration and part of the new innovation that you'd be looking to drive. So having these, having this core team is going to be important for you for it to be success. Like to give you a couple of examples as well, just, just to finish off before we go to next steps. In terms of building um, out your business case and really building out a, a center of excellence, like the Dow Jones um, migrated its data centers to AWS and will continue, to continue doing so. And they're going to have a global saving of over 100 million in terms of infrastructure costs. Now, I know that's a very large corporate organization. But it'll give you the uh, it will give you an indication of the trust that, that the large corporate organisations have in AWS and the impact that we're having on their bottom line and the costs. So, with that in mind, you have your team built up then to help you on your journey. Now, everything's pointing at AWS. So, how can we help? We can help in a number of different ways. So, your account management team and your solution architects will help you on your journey to, uh, to moving to AWS. Depending on the skills you have, it may make sense and the workload that you have, it may make sense to bring in a partner or two that's very experienced in migrating in workloads in AWS and take some of that heavy lifting off you, but at the same time, upskilling your own team. And we really see that working very well in organizations here locally, because when you have a developer who's experienced in migrating across and using CICD in AWS. When they sit down and work with organizations who may not have as much experience, the culture shift is amazing to see. It really is. So in terms of um, next steps, that re really it goes back to, I want to be able to help you upskill on your journey to AWS. And you can actually do that as we have complementary half-day AWS tech essentials that we have for people who have attended these webinars. So we have someone in Sydney and Melbourne um, and please feel free to register for them. You have the email address so you can just send them an email. But as well, anyone that has registered will, for this uh, webinar will get an email as well from us too. Um, now, I encourage you as well um, to, to turn around and, and to kind of continue, continue on your learning. And we have a number of, of sessions in place that we had during the course of, of this month um, on why customers are moving to AWS and what are the best practices in the place. So I'd encourage you as well to continue to follow our webinar series that we're going to be having and it's continuous. Uh, on, on top of that, we have also a number of lunch and learn sessions in our offices where we bring customers in and talk on a certain topic. Um, and I know in December, we're having a, 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 we're having a webinar on reInvent Recap, which is all the cool and exciting things that are happening this week at reInvent and that's getting launched. So we then we'll be able to come and and talk and share with you a lot more detail about those products and services that have get launched next month. So really, um, uh, there's a number of case studies here and, uh, that you can happily go on to our AWS site and read through about their migrations to AWS. Um, and, and, and really, I encourage you then to, we, we have 10 or 15 minutes now to uh, you know, share any questions that you have through our webinar and through the portal, and you know, I'm happy to happy to see if there's any any open questions for for myself that can help you answer. And also as well, um, I, one thing that's super important for us here in AWS, and uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without your feedback. So let me let me, I would really appreciate if you take a couple of minutes to give. Uh, to answer the survey and really give the feedback of what you thought in this webinar. Um, relating that back into AWS, let me, let, let me give you a data point here to, to finish this off. So last year we released over 1,020 new features and products on AWS and 90% of those features and products were actually from customer feedback. So it's something that we love to capture and love to take and love to then give back to our, our, our customers. Um, so 
on that, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm just wondering, uh, let me check to see if any questions have come through. No. I'm happy to. I'm happy to to wait. Um, I'm happy to stay on the on the webinar for the next ten minutes. So, so team, I encourage you to uh, really send through any questions you have. I'm going to definitely take the next uh, ten or fifteen minutes here and, and go through any questions that you have. Do you know, I've, I've, I've just got a great question through. Um, do you know, how do you get dinosaurs onboarding with cloud thinking? Um, you know, good question. And, and, and really, it's something that's quite common is, is just, I suppose people are, it's the unknown. Um, so it, it's that education and journey that the that businesses come along. So if I come and talk to some certain customers, Customers who, who you know really don't know cloud and, and it, it boils down to they don't want to move to the cloud for a certain number of reasons. It's kind of like okay, talk to me about like security or talk to me about the cost or talk to me about why I would do it. And it's really about sitting down and, and taking them through what the journey has been and the customers that have been on that journey, um, and and really taking the time to earn their trust, which is really another one of of our leadership principles that we have. So we looked always for the long term and to sit down um, with them and, and to help them on that journey. Um, a couple of things. Uh, so first question was, there's another question come through, have you got any templates for procurement? Um, so if I go take a step back, so procurement will probably look at two things. Uh, they want to, okay, now how much, are we, how much is AWS going to cost us? And that's actually publicly available on our website. So when you, if you go to uh, uh, aws.amazon.com uh, and search for pricing, it's fully transparent. We detail exactly how much it is, and we actually have worked with business in building out a simply monthly calculator. So if you have any questions around how to work, how much is this going to cost us, we'd actually sit down with you, whether it's over the phone or face to face, put the inputs into the simply monthly calculator and share that with them. Yeah, so another good question here from um, what is the effective way to shift upper management's mindset uh, to, the, to the cloud? Um, so a couple of things here. Um, when, we, when, we help, when we want to uh, be able to upskill and educate uh, senior leadership's uh, understanding of the cloud, it goes back to the question that we had a little bit earlier is, is take them on the journey with you. So. What, have, what has been done in cloud uh, um, uh, most of late? So there's lots of use cases uh, on our site on what, uh, how customers have innovated. Uh, we'll certainly go out and sit and talk with them and really understand their paid, understand um, what do they know about the cloud um, and what, what's their perception and what's their thoughts on it? Because when personally, how I like to engage business is to, is to understand uh, in our first meeting, it's not, uh, um, it's, it's more understanding you and your organization and why you want, uh, why, why would it make sense for you to consider moving to the cloud? And we show use cases examples. So it's probably something that we're actually, as an account team, happy to go out and sit and have a chat with you first and then look to how we can do that. Another great question came through is, is how do you justify all cloud migration for clients 
where their legacy systems do not support being moved into the cloud. These are built up over the years and simply can't si simply be retired in some cases. And yeah, that, that, that very good point. Very, very, very good point. And that comes back to the six hours that we have. And we'd actually go, actually, th this has been retained and it's not moving. So it, you would obviously sit down and work with the team and work with the legacy, work with the application teams and go, okay, if anything, uh, what would this look like in the cloud? Does it make sense? Can it run? And I'd strongly encourage um, you know you to look at a proof of concept. Let's look, let's look at something over a four week period. Can that be moved across? And we're super happy to work with you along with a partner on doing that. Uh, I'll give you a really good example. I was working with one customer recently. He had a large monolithic application. I didn't believe that it could run on AWS. And we ran a proof of concept and took a replica of that application. And it was up and running within two and a half weeks on AWS. And, and it's really amazing to see that. Um, to see those proof of concepts um, work. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, in other cases it may not work and we're okay with that, but let us, let us run a proof of concept and try it and work with you on that. Um, another question coming through is, uh, which one is a better option for offboarding? Peering to AWS data centers via the direct connects, what's the difference advantages between the two? Great question. And, um, it, it comes back to what is the most efficient for you and your business. Uh, so, you know, does it make sense for you guys to have a direct connect? It could. Uh, it could be more cost effective too. Uh, so certainly happy to uh, to work through that. Um, happy to, to come back to you over email on that. Yeah, but just another great question coming through. Um, there are some instances where a company internally would like to move to AWS, um, but the people who are currently managing it um, aren't that supportive of that. Um, and, and you know, we we get we really get that. Um, and going back to being customer obsessed um, and thinking long term with you is is working out what um, what does make sense here and how can we help um, show uh, a proof of concept that can work maybe we're not within that application but another application um, and then taking that back and sharing that with the business Uh, any other questions coming through? Ah, yeah, great, great question. Someone just asked around, uh, what's the steps for proof of concept for AWS? Who's the contact points? So, guys, uh, on the on the back of this, you will get uh, a, a touch point from uh, our team. So, what are the steps in doing a proof of concept? Is really um, turns around and we will sit down and work with you on what a proof of concept is um, and how we can uh, how, how can we make uh, logical sense of, of, of what you're looking to do with a proof of concept and talk through that with, with you and with uh, myself and say a solution architect so if if you do want to run a proof of concept, definitely I'm super keen in, in, in talking with you and help fleshing that and taking that to fruition. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's not difficult. Uh, we just need to make sure that um, you actually have the support internally to do the proof of concept yourself or we bring in a partner. Um, do you know, and, and any questions we don't get to answer here, we'll reply to individually via email separately. So, um, do you know, if that is everything, um, guys, really appreciate you taking an hour out of your day and, and, and listen to me talk through um, building out your your business case and the stage and the steps of moving to the cloud. Um, you know, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to uh, and drop them in, into the webinar right now. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you very much for your time and um, all have a great afternoon.